So this little Kanye has come to us for a second opinion. He's been to a vet. He's got really bad respiratory disease. As soon as he stresses slightly, you can hear gasping respiration, which I'm not going to induce now. And all I, this video is really about just the general principles of respiratory disease in birds and addressing the most common issues as quickly as you can before, um, before you get major diagnostics, before you do a lot of lab work, before you culture things. So he's been on a polypharmacy of different medications, but the common things we worry about in a bird practice is one, chlamydia. So we're going to use an antibiotic that covers chlamydia and has another spectrum, which in this case is going to be enrofloxacin. Um, he's also got a sign, he, his, little, his little nose, it's very hard to see, the, but they're blocked and he's, and he's, and he's sneezing up um, discharge from the nostrils. So I'm going to do a sinus flush, which you guys will watch right now, I'll do it in front of the camera. In general, birds on an all-C diet, on a poor diet, vitamin benefit with vitamin A injection. So they, they benefit a lot from a vitamin A injection if they've got respiratory disease. So essentially, this is just a standard way. We're doing nothing different. It's getting vitamin A, sinus flush, antibiotic. The third thing is, which we do generally on a second opinion case, is we worry about fungal issues. Aspergillus and certain other fungal issues aren't primary, but when a bird's been coughing and spluttering for a long time, it's secondary, and we just we're not going to be before we're getting results and things. We want to save this bird, so he's going to go into itraconazole, which is an antifungal drug. And the last thing we do for these guys is we use nebulization. We're using a product called F10, which is a, it just happens to be a product that we use here. I'm not saying it's the best or worst, but but the idea of nebulization is that. We get micro particles or very tiny particles. So when the bird breathes, the actual medication goes right down into the potentially into the trachea, maybe even into the air sacs. Remember, birds don't have a diaphragm. So when they breathe, they have to move their chest. So that's why when we hold a bird, we never put pressure on the chest. But at least we're getting some medication into the air sacs, which have a very poor blood supply. That's why it's very difficult. Respiratory disease is serious in birds. They've got an incredibly efficient respiratory system, but the price we pay is it doesn't have a good blood supply to the air sacs. So the first thing I'm going to do is give, a, is give an injection. The injection is given subcutaneous into the, into the pectoral muscles here. And the nice thing is, is actually this bird's still in pretty good condition. And as you can see with, with giving injections, it's not too stressful. It doesn't hurt the bird much. I've chosen the, um, I've chosen to go in the, the one side's pretty much completely blocked. So I'll start on the, um, on the good side, which I'm just really flushing um, some sterile saline down the sinus. So I'm just, and you can see it actually coming out the other side, coming out the mouth, stressing the bird. You can actually see some, Mm -hmm. so you're putting him into a heated incubator? This is our being a bird clinic. We have a, we have these little heated incubators all over the place as provisional stops. This is in our prep area, out of surgery. We've got one in each consult room. So if we need to put a bird down something, we can put them down in a perfect environment. I just want to clear some of the debris out the sinus. And then straight after that, I'm going to do a tube feeding, which is both electrolytes amino acids um, it's just very easy to digest without eating too much and on the top of that it's so easy to give so we'll finish the sinus flush I've got to do the other side now so you can see the little nostril I flushed out of this side last time and it's not pretty clear now and now I'm going to do this side which was a little more blocked when we started I'm really going to put a syringe on the end and just flush so it's, 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 it's not easy to see, it may be a lot to make it easier for the camera. So we're really just putting on, um, and you'll see it coming out the mouth and the other side. You would have seen it coming out the mouth and the other side of the booth. Sorry. It's a blunt end of the needle. A blunt. I've, I've, I've taken the needle and, and taken the... So for, for larger, for smaller birds, um, this is a 25 gauge, I'll use it for a cockatiel, I could have got a little bit bigger. For chickens, I, I do it, we do it without taking the end off. And now the last part of the, well, the second last part, so now you, we're going to tube feed, which is nutrition, plus antibiotics, plus um, antifungal. 
You can see they recover quite quickly. It's a little bit stressful, especially when you're already respiratory compromised. So the last thing is the crop feed. So we take the we take the little tube. So please open your beak while we while we um, both you. And I don't want to take too long while we do it. So now he's back in his own private. Every bird, as you see, gets their own private incubators. And this little guy's in a private incubator. They really like a mirror. Kind of gives them a lot of comfort. See the nice comfy perches. It's, it's really nice and warm. And we'll set the nebulization up.